this album was very different from any other Skankanansi album um, because we all sat in a room for six weeks writing it, whereas before we'd have periods of writing um, with other people, periods of writing on our own. But this time we, we just solidly sat and wrote and just became a band again, which I think is why this album ended up being very introspective. It's an album about the four of us, our own chemistry, our own wonderluster. Very emotional, very kind, very um, unifying and inspiring. Yeah, this is the album opener. Um, it, this is a song that we kind of... Um, worked on more than any other song on the album because the first version of it was about five minutes long. We chopped and chopped and chopped it down to this song and then we actually decided to give it to, to Jeremy and Rio. And one of the great things that they added to it is they made it tiny and then made it huge and then made it tiny again. So the song has this beautiful, laconic vocal but it has a lot of rise and fall. It builds and builds. Um, this song differs from a lot of the other songs that we've started our albums with before because we usually start with a bang. You set the mood for the album with the first track and God Loves Only You is the perfect setup because it's melodic, it's, it's beautifully articulated harmonically and it's just got a wonderful aura, vibe to it which is the vibe of the album fundamentally. It's one of um, our favourite lyrics on the song because um, God loves only you. It's really just about the intolerance people have for other people's uh, religious states um, and how hard it is to actually discuss religion nowadays, um, whether it's uh, Catholicism or um, Islam or, or Christianity it's very hard to actually for these people to come together and talk about anything religious and uh, um, it's just this kind of singular attitude people have to religion where they just think it's for them and for nobody else Yeah. yeah, this is my best side, by the way. Just in case you boys need to know that. <laughs> This is the first single off the album, and obviously everyone wants to know who is <laughs> the ugly boy. Now, if you ask me, it's, it's a toss-up between Mark and Ace. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely Mark. A toss-up or a toss-up? Because <laughs> if it's a toss-up between Mark and Ace, that's me. <laughs> This was the first song, actually, that Skunk and Nancy stood up and played. It was the first one that made us have goosebumps and sparkle dust and that lovely, mellow feeling inside your heart where you know you've got a great song. I think the, the wonderful thing that Jeremy and Bria did was they really kept that um, energy going, that, like, trashy, dirty thing. We probably would have made it a hell of a lot heavier, and they kept, they kept the lid on it, so you got all that undulating sexual energy, but it, it, it doesn't blast your rivers off.
This song is about those indiscretions that you may have made in your life at some point with that person. It's not necessarily a physical ugliness. It could be an emotional ugliness or just something that is slightly distasteful in someone but still... You, you still put your foot. Yeah, you still put your it's foot bit, in yeah, the water. It's a, bit, it's a bit skeleton in the cupboard, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a the, bit kind of like everyone has an ugly boy or an ugly girl in that cupboard. Yeah, it's the walk of shame or the drive of shame, depending on how you <laughs> manoeuvre. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you made overriding feeling during that walk of shame is like I hope no one ever finds out about this. Yeah. <laughs> My sweetest. It's interesting, everybody has different um, kind of feelings about different songs on the album and we've only really um, had, the album's only been out to the press for a couple of weeks so this is all these feelings that people have about songs. So it's the rec- most recognisable skunk track on the album. Not sure about that, maybe um, it's the strings, maybe it evokes a feeling of uh, secretly. So I can see, I can see the sense in that but for us, like most tracks on the album, they f- it feels like a brand new vibe. Um, and a brand new energy. Um, I think that most of the songs on the album came fairly, fairly quickly. There were some songs that we wrote that took a while to come together and they actually didn't end up on the album. Um, the, mo- the songs that kind of came together quite quickly were the ones that we chose. We wrote about 55 songs, so um, for us it was easy to see which songs really stood out. Um, and this was one of them, and I think it works, works quite well on the album. You want me now, but that's not- Save Me is really, I think it's one of the songs that really, I think in many ways, Skunk and Etsy, the band, we've saved ourselves. Um, and I think that coming together again has been a very positive and a happy experience for every member of this band. So it's kind of like in some ways, like the feeling from the lyrics and the feeling about the song um, is that, you know, you know, I feel like the rest of the band have saved me. You know, and I feel like I've saved them. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a circle of a circle of positivity. Um, but I think as a band, it was it was it was that 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 energy and that feeling. It was just a lull in the songwriting, and we just kind of felt like writing something a bit mellow and a bit quiet. And that song literally came from nowhere. It was just a couple of chords that were being played and a lyric that popped into my head. You came and saved me. You saved me. 